<laughs> wait, 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 wait. You know, well, we've got to start this thing. Dream it, believe it, become it. Come on down, come on down, come on down. <laughs> and Spence, you know, listen, we have to. We well, listen, you know, um, our brother, Mr. Trevor Hugh Curry, passed this morning, and the first thing we done or you done was phone me and tell me about it. Um, and I was like, Spence, Gary, let's just do a little 30 minute tribute to the, you know, uh, to, to the Curry, to uh, Trevor Curry and the Curry family, um, as a show of respect, because boxers, um, as John Murray, and I reiterate, what John Murray said to us the other day is that the day... Wait, wait, wait. Don't, just in case someone's tuning on there and they're saying John Murray, they don't know who he is. John okay. Murray is a former British, European and world title challenger as a lightweight. Who, uh, so we just got to reiterate that to the people. Yes. So know yes. Just exactly who we're, who we're talking about. Talking about, yes. I mean, it was, we, it was, uh, when did he retire? 2011? Yes, sir. Um, he, re he retired from the sport. So... Uh, continue people yeah you know i was saying john murray said the, the john murray said the day he stopped fighting was the day the phone stopped ringing okay so <laughs> so you know as i said i feel it was incumbent on our team the stamina for soul team to really just even if it's for a few moments um really just you know go through mr curry's career and just so he's not forgotten about or not even mentioned by the by others and in the boxing fraternity. Because I know it's all right for people to, you know, in their houses say, yeah, you know, Don Donald Curry was a good fighter. But you know, listen, sometimes people need a bit more than that. They need Hero, people, Hero Curry, Hero Curry. Hero Curry, sorry. Sometimes uh, people need people people sometimes people need people in um in the public eye to be able to remember these greats because that's what they are they're greats you know when they pass and sometimes that's all it, it takes and 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 yeah I, i'm i'm ready to listen to you because i know you know you, you are the knowledge and uh you would know more on this but i mean i've, I've done my little research today and, I, and i've seen some well, you can read off your parts of your your, your research now tom because i know you're a little fact finder man and I'll yeah. just I'll just I'll just take it in from then. All right. Before I say I've got that, can I talk about him as well? So it's all good. Yes. Before I say that, uh, Re Swell said the Curry family are tuned in. Thank you. You see and what I'm saying? You see what I'm trying to say? Mm, that, that's powers, man. That's powers, and I, and 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 thank you very much. I hope that you know, um, it really you know myself and, and and spencer and gary really just give you a bit of you know i don't know i don't know the word i'm looking for i mean i i don't you i'm not usually lost for words but you know when 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 people pass when our loved ones passed you know in the time of mourning you, you really want to celebrate i've always looked at it as like you know celebrate their life and uh anything we can do to um ease the pain which undoubtedly and inevitably you'll be feeling right now um i hope we can do that so on to the facts and I, I was saying i was looking at um trevor's record and i mean he fought at a time when you had to be able to fight because <laughs> there weren't no youtube or internet or there ain't nothing like that so Ram, when you get a phone call <laughs> Rob, big up boxing beats and rhymes yes. you know i mean because the real one He's always been behind man, so I have to big him up. You know what I mean? Yes. When Hura Curry knocked out Glenn McCory. Yeah, he's he touching ate, my thing. He ate <laughs> about six eggs for breakfast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I was I was saying that, you know, you know, Trevor was fighting in a time where you really had to be a fighter. And you know, you look at his record and you see um um 17 wins. Uh, 11 losses and one draw and you think oh that's not a good record but the difference no between <laughs> the no difference between that. the difference between then and now is that you ain't getting a look in you know and 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 again just like what the great johnny nelson said the other day 
you know, when you know your destiny, you just keep working and and and, and fighters, especially black fighters in particular, which I know you're going to go into, uh, back in those days, it was a tough, tough sport for them. And I think we've seen where, you know, in, in, in Trevor's particular record where he's had early losses and early losses and then um, fighting uh, uh, Funzo Banjo. You understand? And then l losing that by a half a point. And then two, three, what's that? Four fights later. No, I think two, hold on, one, two, yeah, two, three fights later, he's fighting uh, um, Funzo Banjo again, and winning the vacant. Like, don't get, don't get, at the time, at the time of then, right? That was from Southern Era title, right? Yes. When he fought, when he fought Funzo Banjo the first time, right? Yes. No, for the British title, right? Yes. Yes. But back then, what they would do certain times, like they would throw in the Southern Era title as well. They mm. did that also when. Um, Oh, how can they call it? Dennis Andres, light heavyweight, yes. who was a WBC world champion at the time. Yes. Right? And when he was the WBC champ, uh, what they did, they, when Tony Simpson challenged him and it was promoted by Frank Warren in 86, what they did, they, they also threw in a Southern Era title for boot. Because people don't realize how prestigious the Southern Era title was. It was a prestigious title, and yes. then in with what we just the British Border Control would just throw that in as well. So them them days, sorry, they threw the British, but sometimes they throw the Southern Era title in there as well. So when yeah. you when you fight for a British title, they'll throw in a Southern Era title as well. And mm. and so you have to know the magnitude of them. And also when you're talking about Funjo Banjo, Funjo Banjo was yes. Chris Eubank Senior before Chris Eubank Senior. Come on. Because Funjo Banjo was very articulate, very um, speaky, spoky. Um, that, that, that's not the band, same banjos that go, used to go Lin. No, 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 no. no. no okay, it's, not okay. them. it's not okay. them. But they could be related. You know what I mean? Mm. But um, Funjo, Funjo Banjo was also, he's also the father of, what are the two sons from who, what's it? What's that dance group team? Diversity. That's okay. Their that's their dad. That's their dad. That's their dad. Wow, you know I mean, that's wow. Banjo, the that's Funjo, Funjo Banjo sons. So, the knowledge, yeah. So, um, Funjo Banjo was a very tall, gangly fighter. I remember at the time when, at the time when Hugh Ray Curry fought him, as far as I'm concerned, Hugh Ray Curry recorded his best win, um, because he fought, um, Alfredo uh, Evangelistas. Evangelista fought Larry Holmes and he fought Muhammad Ali. Mm. Right? He world title. Mm. Mm. So, Huey Curry went into that fight not expecting to win that fight. Okay, okay. He went home as a body. And Huey Curry, like yard man style, said, nah, man, rip up the script. Right? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. You know what I mean? And went in there and he did his thing. Yes. So, I... go on, Tim. No, no, carry on. Yes, I'm so loving it. Right. Wait there, knowledge. I love listening to you because I'm, 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 I'm from one brother to another. Hey, there's no ego. I'm learning just like everyone online is learning. So talk the thing, my man. Right. So the Evangelistas fight was in 1984. Evangelistas at the time, he had bear fights. It was something like 50 wins. What's his record? Put it up. 50 wins. It's not like 50 wins. Who, who, who's that? Evangelistas, just before the Fonjo Banjo fight, Evangelistas was something like, it was like 50 wins, eight or seven losses. It wasn't mm. on market. Because I yes, remember yes, this yes, fight. yes, yes, yes. Evangelistas. Right, because I remember this, I remember that fight, you know, because mm. he was, he, he was put in that fight as, um, as, as the gimme. Yes. Right? That was an incredible win. Right, so mm. when he turned pro, he turned pro with Mike Barrett under. You remember, he had like the, the free, it was it was Barrett, um, Duff and Lawless. Yes, yeah? yes, the Rat Pack, the Rat Pack. Mm. Right, and and them man were they were right. Ah, uh, but you see, even boxing beats nose. Evangelistas fought Larry Holmes. That's right. You know what I mean? Mm. 
Um, mm. them, those times there, you had to fight. He was yes. born for the gimme in that fight. So, uh, uh, so he fights, he fights that fight, he comes back successful, so he's on a high. Yes. But, but within that time, he earned about from the time he turned pro, so in three years, he earned about three thousand pounds. Wow. What wow. that one? He turned pro at 81. Yeah. And he loses his second pro fight from a guy that he already beat. Right? He goes on, he gets he's on a winning run now. He ends up fighting Evangelistas. He beats Evangelistas, which is a big upset. Yes. Right? And from then everyone was talking about him. But within that duration of time, and we're going back 1981, you know. And you're saying in that time you only earned three thousand pounds. So a grand a year he made from professional boxing. You see, and these young boys nowadays, you give them three grand for four round fight. They're saying that's that's too less. That's All too. Right. It's too little. All right. All you right. know. So 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 moving on after that first banjo loss by a half a point, which was for the vacant southern area and an eliminator for the british title mm -hmm. you know he wins his next two fights free uh, wins his next two fights then rematches banjo and becomes the british heavyweight champion and the southern area champion just right. to go and at that time wait, 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 sorry what's boxing beats rhyme say what do you say let's, let's not look. forget he was an underdog against glenn mccory yes he went on to become he went to champion of right now we're going to touch on that yeah we're going to touch on that we're going to touch on that but I'm just going to continue the story, but I'm going to touch on this, yeah? Now, well, so, um, what's that? Shireen Curry says, thank you, Tundi, for this tribute, right? And, love, and, Shireen. and Shireen, it's all love, you know what I mean? Uh, was it your cousin Mary for me this morning to tell me that he was in hospital, mm. right? And then somebody put it on Facebook that he actually passed away, and it was early, it was about 8.30, I got the news. So then straight away, I just said, boy, I can't believe this. So anyway, so he goes away from that. He fights Fonzo Banjo. And I remember Tim's news. Now, I know Boxing Beats and Rhymes is around about that same age. So he'll remember. There's a member. Tim's news. Remember Tim's news on the ITV? Oh, come on. Really, come on. We're Tim's old. news with Andrew Gardner. <laughs> remember that? Yeah, 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 Gardner. The Barlid man. He must be mm. dead now. But I'm saying, like... <laughs> come on. He must be dead. Right? <laughs> and they had... They, they they went to Huey Curry and then Huey Curry says yeah, yeah you know I mean he went he was in the camera I remember this I was, damn time what was I about nine but I remember Huey Curry went this is my judge and this is my jury <laughs> <laughs> yeah Love. come on his that show, was a, yeah, what the fun Joe Banjo fight because yeah. at them times then Frank Bruno was the, the darling of 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 British boxing yeah yes. And it was always like, yeah, yeah, I want to get in the ring with Bruno. All of them were saying they wanted to get into to Bruno. And like I said, Fonjo Banjo was a very, very well spoken man. They said, yes, obviously I'd like to fight um, um, Frank, but obviously I've got to get past um, Huey, which I undoubtedly I believe I will do that. And I said, yeah, Huey Curry weren't thinking, weren't reading off of that script. Yeah, Huey Curry punch him up, bro. Brought him was, up. Now that was a ten round. That was a ten round tear up, you know. Yes, yes, yes. The, 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 no, sorry, he was a 12 rounder. I can't. I, that was a 12 rounder. 12 no, no, no. It was a 12 rounder. The, yeah, the. um, Yeah, yeah. The, the, the rematch was a 12 rounder. 12 rounder? Yes. And like, he beats him. Then he goes on. And there was a man called Proud Kilimanjaro. To anybody who grew up in the 80s on BBC, this big, tough back Africa man, Proud Kilimanjaro, yeah? Mm. This man would come over a regular fight every cropped heavyweight. Him and Horace, it seemed like they'd fight every week, them two. Them I would, bro, them I would fight. Now, and you know what? Let, let me, let me, bro, because I'm you're getting me excited now. You're getting me excited because, again, you are the knowledge, undoubtedly the knowledge. And this is what I was saying, Gary, can we just watch, have a little clip of the great Trevor Hugh Ray Curry? In a little sparring match with someone that you may remember, Spence, still to this day, Mr. Eric Guy, the video what? man. Who, bro, so, Eric. I don't know that little slim white guy with, with hair. <laughs> Eric on. Guy is, 
He's now old with a big pot belly and board. Trust me, he, you know why? Because he teed by everyone's money when we used to buy the tapes, the boxing tapes from him. Bro, this <laughs> guy must be one rich man because he would go to every single boxing match and yes. film every and single film. And, and everyone you know, used to drive up to his yard. Where was that? Near Era for one of them places. Yeah, exactly. to buy your yeah. tape for £10. Yeah, for £10. And all you were seeing Eric's front room is tapes after tapes after. Yeah, you, you, right see, right you see the right hand. You see the right hand. You see the right hand. Some of you boys thinking that it just started with Floyd. Man was doing this thing from long time. Exactly. And what people don't realize is like where this, where this, where this gym was, where they were sparring. Yeah. Yes. It was in Carnaby Street. It was it was the Lonsdale Lonsdale. Carnaby yes. Street gymnasium, and everybody yes. would go to Carnaby Street, the Lonsdale shop, to buy their equipment. There was, that was the only read. There was there was two shops that used, there was there was that Lonsdale, and there was also the Lonsdale in Brixton. Mm. Frank Bruno used to used to used to work, and then also Frank Johnson's behind Bon Marsh. Remember Frank Johnson's? Um, was, listen, you know, if you were from South and you never know about Frank Johnson, bro, you ain't no one. And you never ball trainers them times. <laughs> yeah, come on. Right, but. You see the skills, you see the head movement. Come on, and, man. And this is how it used to be back in the day. And also what people seem to forget is like Trevor, when he when he sparring it, Eric Guy never turned pro. Eric Guy was he was a very good amateur in the army, and he yes. Eric Guy wanted to turn pro because he was sparring with all of these guys, right? He was sparring with all these all these guys. So this this sparring here, I would say, was about mm, eighty seven, maybe. Come on, yeah. You know I mean, just by looking at it, around about nineteen eighty seven. And the next thing, what people don't realize is this: is like Trevor Curry and um, Trevor Curry and Lloyd Hannigan yes. were best friends, you know, as you yeah. growing up. Yes, I wish we had that little piece with the Hannigan when 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 oh, he come out with a belt. Yes, yes. Gary, maybe Gary can put it up there. I'll send it to Gary now. Yeah, I, I remember mean, that. In fact, our producer Gary, I actually sent you that when with Lloyd Hannigan. Um, but in the beginning stage, you'll see um, Trevor Hugh Curry holding all of Lloyd Hannigan's free belts when Lloyd Hannigan famously went and beat another Curry, but spoke with a Y in Atlantic City in September of 1986. But mm. these two guys grew up. I remember the first time. <laughs> I, the first time I met. Hugh Roy Curry, first time I met him was just after Lloyd Hannigan beat Donald Curry. And they were walking around, they were walking down the Woolworth Road, East Street Market. Everyone used to go to East Street Market. Come and on. You could go their teeth, bear sweets down there. Bear sweets. Remember you used to go, you remember, you remember the shops? And you just take the, 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 the sag and everyone had them in, in everyone's parents had them, the, 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 the bowler sweets. Yeah, right, man. Come Those on. are the days. Right? Those are the and days. I was going down Road Market. Yes. And 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 Trevor and and Lloyd, they both they like they both just the same. They had remember the days where everyone used to wear them 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 Tour de France hats, the turn up hats. Yeah, yeah, the yeah. Hat. And they had on they had on um both had on jean jackets and 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 a jean suit. Look wicked. Mm. So that was that was nineteen eighty six. That's the first time I met them guys. And like yes. I was like, I was just gassed to see them. I'm a little kid. I'm like, Lloyd Hannigan, Lloyd Hannigan, Trevor Curry. And then man, like, and Trevor was like, yes, you know, what I mean? you know it's a real yard, man. He's like, yes, big up yourself, you yeah, big up yourself. I was like, yeah. <laughs> come on, come on. So after Trevor wins the after Trevor wins the British title, he fights Proud Kilimanjaro. They have a war. Yes. Remember that fight on BBC? Yep, 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 yep. And Kilimanjaro was 20 and 0 at the time. 20 and 0, brother. Mm. Right, 20 and old, and then that earned him the shot at Horace Notice. And I yes. would say to anybody, go and watch that fight. That is a wicked fight, you know. Mm. No, mm. No, no, Horace no. Notice against Trevor Curry for the vacant Commonwealth and the British title. Yeah, because Trevor was defending his British title and they were fighting for the vacant Commonwealth title. And I'm telling anyone, please just go and watch that fight. Even though Trevor Curry come off second best in that mm. fight, because he, I remember he dropped Horace Notice. Now Horace Notice was he was muted to be something big because Horace Notice should have fought Francisco Demiani for the European title after this. But unfortunately, 
Yeah, yeah, but unfortunately, um, uh, I think he had some eye injury or something. Yes, yes, really? and he had to retire. Yeah, and he had to retire from boxing. Yes, but, like, yes. but a lot of people don't know because you remember the the Tavernier family in EastEnders. Yeah, of course, of yeah. course. The mum, the the woman who played the mum was actually Horace Knox's wife. Mm. We, and like Horace, Horace and Trevor, that fight there was a classic. And and you know after you know you know uh, suffering that defeat by um Norris in his next fight to show you the grip of the fighters back in those days you know uh I think it was six months later he fought Glenn McClory right now listen to this one here right Come on, talk to facts. Ryan, boxing beats around put it up what you just said put it up boxing beats around no, no, not about Elliot, but about the Glenn McCory. He said something about Glenn McCory. Mm. Let's not forget he was the underdog against McCory. McCory went on to become the cruiserweight champion of the world. Is that the now, comment you was talking about? Yep, that comment there, right? Yeah, at, <coughs> come on, Spence, break it down. Nah. Glenn McCory, there was a lot of hype about Glenn McCory. Because remember, it was from up north. Yes. Right, there's a lot of hype about him. And Glenn McCory wasn't actually a heavyweight. He ate himself up to be a heavyweight, right? Yes. He ate himself up. But they thought because of the fight, because they wanted to break this, 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 this boy from up north, this white guy from up north, he like the entire Britain was still craving, well, the world was craving for a great white hope. Yes. So they thought Glenn McCurry was going to be the great white hope. And he was a, a great hope because he became World Cruiserweight Champion. I became World Cruiserweight Champion. But yep. it was not to be a heavyweight because the broke up that <laughs> Curry gave him, you know. Oh, yeah, yeah. Before, before Lennox. Yeah. That was, no, no, no. That beating was a serious beating, you know. Come on. Right, that was a serious beating. Hure Kai punched him so hard he lost the weight and got down to cruise away. <laughs> Come on, do the things, man. Right, I just I just want you to know that that he got a very torrid beating, right? A systematic beating. And like mm. I remember when I, I remember when like um first time I got invited to speak on on ringside before I started working there. But first time I got invited to speak on ringside for Sky. And yes. I, like how certain times we don't, we got to take time with guys is sometimes the losses don't define you. And I yes, use sir. the fact that Glenn McCurry got beat by Hiroi Curry. Yeah. And, and that in the beating that he got, he brushed himself, he came back and became a world champion. But yes. Glenn McCurry, Took it as like I was trying to disrespect him. Mm. Like, oh, why? Afterwards, when we finished with the offset, he said, "Oh, oh, why do you have to mention that?" And rare, 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 rare. But I said, "I'm, I'm mentioning because it didn't not happen." Yes. And this, this sounds stupid, bro, because you're not seeing a compliment in what I'm saying. Yes, yes. Two kids, Vince. Right. L listen, you know me already. Turn out on business. <laughs> Come on. Right. It's a fact. Right. Facts. And, and, the next thing, and the next thing I'm saying is like, this is why we have to big up. Our guys that we affiliate with, that we used to see, come remember. Yeah, and that's the inspiration. That's the inspiration. Because yes. I remember when he first saw me spar, he saw me spar with Cruiserweight Kevin Mitchell. I got a shout out Cruiserweight Kevin Mitchell. He saw me spar with Cruiserweight Kevin Mitchell down at um, the Henry Cooper. And he was saying, any help, any help you need, I'll give it to you. You have skill, take the mm. number. And then from yeah, Right, and then from then, and this is this is this is like ninety four, mm. right? But to me, I was just still gas because I understand like these men are great warriors, and if there's a round today with the right guidance, then yes. might, because the school level that was expressed by people like Hugh Roy Curry, their man was like old school. They were all clever guys. They were able to slip on the inside. Even in his fight where he loses to Gary Mason. Yes. Talking expense. Was that 89 or 88? Um, 
I just said it there. Hold on. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Give me a sec. I've gone back now. Go on, carry on talking. Right. Even in the fight against Gary Mason. Gary Even Mason was 89. Sorry. 89, right. So that right, 89 and one more fight after that, he retires, right? So yeah. even against Gary Mason, and at this time now, Trevor was was old, you know. Mm. You know I mean, he was old, he was demoralized, he's beaten down. Trevor was making Gary Mason, God rest his soul as well, and have a great warrior that passed away a few years back, right? He made he made Gary Mason, who was at the time. Uh, the number two ranked heavyweight in the world by the WBC. Yes, he made Gary Mason look like a Mason. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, two gets right. He made Come him look more lethargic. I'm yes. telling you, just go and watch. Just go and watch these. And these are the fights I haven't even watched recently. I, you know what I mean, these are the fights that I can I recall from back in the day. So mm. when we're looking on when we're looking on these men, like it's sad how the sport can love you, especially if you're a heavyweight. I remember at the time when he was with um, Barrett and those guys and he left those guys and he was managed um, by Morris Hope. Morris Hope, the... the WBC champion? WBC light, middleweight champion of the world. Yes. And he was managing him for, for a little piece, took him out to America where they got great sparring and they built up a great rap rapport. <laughs> but unfortunately, they weren't ready for somebody like a Morris Hope, a, a British man of colour to be managing a fighter. And it's okay when you're fighting, you know the rules. But when mm. you try to go off and try to do something else now, yeah. you'll do something to see these blocks that come up. Well, you, you know who you're talking to, so... All right, right, right. But, <laughs> but you have to understand, um, when you know this thing, right, when you know this thing, they can't stop you. You know what I mean? When you know the thing, they can't. If you put, oh no, let me just say, if you put God first, you, you can, can never, come never ever come second. 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 And that's how we're moving it. Dream it, believe it, become it. Come, come on, to the thing. I mean, <laughs> unity, and unity, strength. Simple, yes. Right? Yes. So I'm saying, like, Trevor Hewitt Curry, it, it, he will be missed daily. He was a very, very good fighter. Um, and unfortunately, we, these guys came way too early for the time. But, but having said that, they gave us the foundation on which we can build them. Well, this is the next thing. What, well, sorry, what's, um, what's, Ray, what's um, Ray say? What's he say? Spencer, your knowledge on Trevor's legacy is beautiful. Thank you for sharing this with everyone. Well, it means a lot, man. I know like, um, Trevor's your people. I believe he's your family and that. So yeah, thank no, thank you for 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 your, for your for your comment. But all I'm doing is I'm talking the truth, right? And the thing about it is this is it's so important, it's imperative, yeah, that people only die when we when we forget them. That's that's it. That's right? it. But not not us. No, not, us. Right. not us because right. uh, we're changing that paradigm, and that's why as soon as you told me, I said no, we're going live. Thirty mm -hmm. minutes. One now it doesn't matter. We we gotta respect these, you know, these greats that have come before. And although many may not have looked at them as great at the time, you can see that these these men led the way for us. And as you say, Spence, they were they were before their time. And um it is right now what we're doing, we're standing on these men's shoulders. There you go. There right. you go. So, so why would not we gonna, why, why like, we gonna, like Jamaica man, oh, them the man that found dear Chandler, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Them the man was foundation to break it down to my English brothers and sisters. Yes, they were the foundation of which we stood on their shoulders to be elevated to where we're going to, right? Yes. Because when we look, when we look on this guy, not just for his fighting, but for his compassion as a human being. I don't know nobody, and it's easy. But you see, like in the hood, he, in boxing, he was one of the real first hood stars. Because Bro, Sorry to cut you there. Because uh -huh. even when I was growing up, man was chatting about Trevor. Because okay. I'm from South, you're right. from you're South. The road man, sir. When you, you come from Kenton, Broccoli, Peckham, Dulwich, Brixton, Lucian, it's the same. All so, right. So, so when I was coming up, I was hearing about Trevor. 
Okay. Because you used to broke up enough men on the road, you know. <laughs> Come on. I mean, you know, <laughs> Trevor used to punch up men on the road regular. <laughs> so, so you know, and also, next thing what men don't realize, Trevor was in the movie Babylon, which was, which was made in 1980. You must know that film. Come right? on, big boy the film, film is an iconic movie. And you know how iconic it is? Because it's now on Netflix. And mm. um, my my movie producer friend, Robin Block, who's doing fantastically well right now, he goes, oh, I, you know what I mean? I've just seen the film. I think you'll love it. He said, what's it? Oh, I just watched it the other day. It's like, it's, it's an iconic British black film back in the 80s. Like Babylon, have you heard of it? I said, you're an idiot. I said, to us, to us, man, that bitch. Yeah, that's Coronation Street. I remember. That's that Coronation Street. Exactly. Trevor, <laughs> you know what I mean? Trevor was, was the bodyguard for the, for the sound man who, who had the records there. So yes. Trevor was up there in, the, like, it's a spinning record, and Trevor's are still up there with his big yeah. self. Oh, there was a no. scene where there was in a boxing gym, innit? Now, there's a scene there, that scene as well, but no, the scene when they were in a, they were in a, they went to the record studio to buy a dub plate. Yeah, Fat, Fat Larry was this mix, this light skinned mixed race man who, yes. who was the boss man. He was sitting down with his big belcher. Remember when man had belcher? And like Trevor Curry was in the background in his uh, what did Trevor? I, I can tell you, Trevor, Trevor on a suit, but he has a waistcoat and trousers, and he just stood like this as the bodyguard with his mm. big belt. He said, Yeah, run the rhythm, and then my man just played the track. So even that, and the fact that round my man, I'm gonna find that clip and put it up on on. Uh, I'm gonna find that clip and put it up on Instagram now. Yes, because, like Trevor, Trevor was a guy, and I remember years later after he retired, he was running all the doors like he was the head captain man of all the doors in the West End. So yes. anytime I turned to any of the clubs, you know, it was just a walking thing, bro. No, <laughs> yeah, come through. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah well, this shot boy, I bring this short boy, true, you know, and we just yeah. walk through. So it's like. Oh, sorry, someone just popped. Who's that? His name was Frankie in Babylon. Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. But uh, Reese well said Babylon and Oxide and Neutrino bound for the reload. <laughs> Come on. Just Sassy says, rest in peace, Trevor. Um, I think that's R R Rihanna Gordon Scott says, rest in peace, Uncle Trevor. Condolences to the family, a legend that will truly be missed and never forgotten from Lincoln and the family. Spence, yeah. this is making me this is making me well up because this is what we need to be doing. And, and, and what did what did me and you say when we started this thing? We are gonna make the change. We've got to be respecting the heroes. Come on, they man. can't be just they can't be just dying after giving themselves and, and not being remembered because others do it. So that's on a you know, um, on a on a on a nationalist. Oh no, no, not national. That's on a on a on a family um way. But in terms of the boxing fraternity as a whole, this should be this was this should be something that's commonplace. You know, fighters, especially ones that you know and ones that you don't know, when they go, when something to happens to them, those in boxing, we can't be sitting now waiting for TV channels to remember them. Everyone's got YouTube now. Everyone's got platforms, social platforms. Let's let's respect and honor these people. One million percent. And like, I remember Trevor. When I when I started when I started like City Boxer Pro, when from the City Boxer Gym. So like, on one thing I got to say, I got big up Mark Burford and those man's from from there. Yeah, big up the white collar shows, right? So they had a big dinner, some big dinner show. And like they were saying, they had some guy who was the guy. I think his name was Stuart. Oh, I forgot Stuart's surname, but a really wealthy trader from the city. And they come and they say there was like um, Spence. Um, we need we need a celebrity to move around with with. We need a celebrity to move around with with Stuart. So I was there like, all right, I'll tell you what I do. Yeah, I'm gonna ring around and see what I could get. He said, yeah, if you get a heavyweight, uh, I said, rah. Get Trevor Curry, he's former British champion. So those guys say, What can you get Trevor Curry? I used to watch him back in the day. They were guests. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't worry, yeah. So I followed Trevor, yeah. I followed Trevor. I said, Yo, Trevor, um, do, do, there's a there's a there's a little white collar thing. If you just move around with this guy who's gas, he used to be one of your fans back in the day. So Trevor was like, Why spirit? <laughs> <laughs> 
Men nu har jag glömt det där till då. Nu har jag inte varit inne i fem år sist i Zoom. Säg alla alla att jag är vågna. I said, no, nah, brother, come, come, do the thing, man. It's like it's a little move round. Remember, like at this time, this must be about fifteen years ago, right? So Trevor's well long into retirement. You know what I mean? Trevor must have been retired about fifteen years prior. So Trevor's like, but I said, no, nah, Trevor, hear what? Move round, move round with this, move round with this guy. Don't take liberties with him. Let's move round for like two rounds. Like when he said, boy, I'm in a no. I said, listen, man, it's next week, and I just need someone to stand in, Trevor. It was like, boy, spirit, man, I knew I'd never do that. I said, it's free grand. He said, give me the address. <laughs> said, give me bro, the address, bro. Money changes everything. I'm telling money, you. Money changes everything. It came down, it came yeah, down, yeah. down at the brewery. Not the brewery um, down in... Oh, no, uh, was that, was that there, Spence? Yeah. Yeah, you was there. Was that, you that there. one there? You was at that one. I took you to that one. You was there. Because you helping glove up the white collar guys for me. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Was at, yeah. And and Trevor came and he just moved around with the guys. You know what I mean? He didn't hit them hard or nothing. He just moved around with the guy and then, and like the crowd just went crazy. And it's like, I'm gonna have to contact Mark Burford to say release that 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 video. You know what I mean? Even I don't talk to the man there down there, but I'm gonna, for this air, I'm gonna get my way and say, look. Because it'd be nice for the family to see that. That's the reception that Trevor Curry got, um, the love that he received that day, and it was, it was like it was like for him being retired for such a long time. So that must have been about uh, 2006 or seven. Yeah, you know I mean, at that time there, he's been he been out of the game for for a hot minute. Been out, been retired for about eight years. Yes. For him just to get that adulation, it was yes. so nice to see. You know what I mean? And then even when he was in there, he was just taking it easy with the guy, but you could just see some little classy stuff. Yeah, like, subtle moves. Yeah, slick, smooth. So, you know what? I just thought it was fitting that we, we were to speak about this man just to put this out. Tom was saying, like, we'll just keep it um, short and sweet. Yes. Um, Before you finish, let me just say a few things from people. You know, James D Douglas, rest in peace. Um, Chamile Gordon says... Rest in peace to my godfather. Um, there's so much. Thank you for sending. Thank you to all of you for sending condolences. Um, rest in peace from Winsome. Win says, rest, rest in peace, Trevor. You were curry. Condolences to the curry family. Chantel Simpson says, what an amazing man. Rest in peace. Um, uh, Israel, big respect for trevor rest in peace alice alice lewis rest in peace trevor chantel rest in peace but, uh, uh, listen spence it was a great man that we're honoring tonight and um you know i hope you know the family can have this as a little tribute from all of our team which is mr gary blake the man behind the cam um, yourself, Spencer, and definitely me. So, yeah, rest in peace or rest in paradise to the one, the only, Mr. Trevor Huroy Curry. Thank you very much. Thank you for everyone who tuned in. Big up Derek Long as well. We just saw your, your thing come up about um, him saying, you know what I mean, Harry, long before Frank Bruno said it. But, you know what I mean, Frank Bruno could twist it in a way where maybe they could understand it a little bit better. I don't <laughs> know. What I am saying is this. Someone like Trevor Curry, and I was in shock when I heard that because I was like, I was I was on I was on a downer today because it was like, right, you know what? It was only two weeks ago I saw Trevor's son in Blue Jay's calf buying food. Mm. And he was the boxing guy and I mean, it was reason. I said, yeah. He said, yeah. Oh, you know my dad, didn't it? I said, who's your dad? He said, Trevor Curry. I said, what? Trevor, I'm bad man, I know. I love Trevor. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know what I mean? Who is this? Um... Kamal uh, Gordon, rest in peace to my godfather, him and my dad's best friends. Not going to be the same. Totally can't believe it. What a legacy you've left, my godfather, from your goddaughters, Kamal. I hope I'm saying that right. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like I'm saying again, you know what I mean? Who's that? AJ, who's that? 
AJ Boxing Fan says, respect to you, man, for shedding light. You know why? Because it's imperative. And what I'm trying to say is this. I'm going to say this again, and I'm saying this to the family of Trevor Hewer and Curry, that people only die when you forget. Right? Yes. When, yes. when, when you come at this, hold on, hold on. this boxing... Say that, wait, wait. Say that line again, Spencer. People only, only die... die when you forget them. Talk right? The so... This is on this is on this on this on YouTube now. This is part of history. It doesn't matter if it gets one view or one million views, yes. right? It's a part of history. And whenever, because I've noticed that people go on and they Google his name, and especially on YouTube, and there's only losing fights of him, and which is wrong because he had some great wins. But at the time, a lot of them weren't recorded. So when you honor these men, you're honoring yourself at the same time because you're honoring yourself to separate yourself from the people that do not mention him. Come on. Period. Come on. So Come on. I'm telling you, like, um, to, for him to rest in paradise, for him to rest in peace, for him to rest in power, God bless Hugh Ray Curry, God bless every single one of his family members and their friends. You know what I mean? And we got to say this, as Tundi always says. Wait. Dream it. Believe it, become it. <laughs> May you rest in power, our brother, Trevor Huey Curry. Amen. Amen.